Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day because I'm playing around with some thermal imaging cameras. This here is an Atari 800XL and I work on old computers all the time. And one of the things that I've found is essential when I first start looking at a computer and even when I'm in the middle of working on one is I like to bust out the thermal imaging camera and see if anything is particularly hot, uh, look at the RAM and just see what seems to be working and not working on the system before I even uh, get out the oscilloscope. Now I have touched chips and actually burn my hands pretty bad. So having a camera like this is kind of nice. I can't always feel the difference when I hold my hand over. Like I don't feel that this is hotter than this, but according to the thermal camera, it's a good bit hotter. So um, I've had this thing for years. I think I've had it for three years and it works, but as you can tell, the resolution is not exactly what you would call great. Um, you can tell that there's a hand here, but you can't even tell which finger is which. So as one does in 2024, uh, you go online and you start doing some reviews. And after doing some reviews, I kind of narrowed things down to two that were in my price range. There was one by Unity, which I love Unity. And there was one by Kai Wheats, which I love Kai Wheats. So I started to go and look at different reviews and things like that. And the reviews by people like Def Palm and some of the other people online, Pile of Stuff did a great review. Uh, they seem to say that the Kai Wheats one was their favorite. So I reached out to Kai Wheats and asked them if they would send me one and they agreed to. Now I want to be very, very, very clear. They did not tell me what to say and this is not a review. This is me showing what I do with this thing in my real life. And so um, I'm just going to show you how I use it and see if maybe that inspires you. I will say that if you decide to buy one of these things, um, I do have a coupon code for Kai Wheats that can save you some money and it also lets them know that you found out about it through my video. Um, I will also link to those other reviews in there uh, so that you can see some other third-party reviews of the product, but this is what I chose. It's a nice camera. It's got a good feel in the hand. Again, not a review video. Um, so we're just going to turn it on and there's all kinds of settings for emissivity and all that kind of stuff. But we're just going to let the thing turn on. It takes about 10 seconds or so to turn on and then we get a picture. So the first thing you can see uh, compared to the old one, which I'll bring the old one back in here for a second, is that the resolution is unbelievably different. And not only is the resolution better, but you can actually see the computer through the screen. So I'm not just looking at the heat that's coming off the board. I'm looking at the actual computer. I can see the RF modulator right there and I can come down here and see that these are chips and I know exactly which chip I'm looking at and which ones are hot and which ones aren't. And so you get this really nice view. And what's really handy is that when I first look at a computer like this, I kind of get an idea of maybe what part of the board is working and which part isn't. And I'll tell you that as I come over here and look at the RAM, I would say that the RAM looks oddly cool. Um, let me grab another one of these things. So I brought over another Atari XL. And uh, as you can see here, those chips should very much um, at least have some heat coming out of them. And as you can see, we've got some heat coming out over here. So what that tells me is that, um, you know, we've got some issues going on on this side of the board. These chips are heated up on both, but these are cold. So I know this is going to sound like something I'm saying just for the video, but it's absolutely true. When I open up a computer, I look at it with my eyes and I see, is there anything obvious going on here? And then the next thing I do is I get my meter on it and I make sure that there's no shorts or anything like that. And I use my meter eyes on it. And then the third thing I do is use my thermal eyes on it. And you can tell very quickly that there's something odd going on with this computer. And I I haven't started probing around at anything. And so that right there can save you hours and hours of troubleshooting and at least start pointing in the right direction where you can start here and kind of work your way back and try to figure out where things are going wrong. The other thing you may run into is a motherboard like this that on the surface looks really good, but when you start putting your meter on the places where the power plugs in, you may see that eventually you get somewhere and you've got a really low resistance. And so 
that's a borderline short. And so you wanna make sure that you get rid of that short before you go ahead and fire the thing up at full strength. Um, if you do, and there's a short on one of these tantalum capacitors or something like that, the capacitor can actually explode. And when it explodes, it can take these delicate tracks with it. So it can actually do other damage to the motherboard. So it's not just a matter of damaging your power supply, you could actually do more damage to the motherboard. So what I do in this situation is I get my benchtop power supply and I realize that I have a, a short here, which is on the, I think that's the uh, five volt line. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my benchtop power supply and I wanna attach it to just the two pins that are shorted together. These clips are a little bit strong for this, but uh, you wanna attach it to ones that are shorted together. So once you have that hooked up, instead of just full sending power to it and hoping for the best, you want to current limit your power supply and you wanna start off with the voltage low and slowly ramp up to the recommended voltage. So this is a five volt line. So I'm gonna start off with basically no voltage, current limited, and I'm gonna slowly ease up the power until the board gets, you know, a couple of milliamps flowing through it. And then I'm gonna get out the thermal camera again and I'm going to look at it and see what I find out. So as I point this thing at the motherboard, you can see that anything that's metal is reflecting back uh, higher than the things that are this dark plastic that's gonna absorb the energy a little bit more. So we need to expect that, but there's no power going through the board. The board's been off for days. So um, we're gonna slowly, we're gonna turn on the power. And right now we're at zero volts, zero amps. And I'm going to slowly allow the voltage and the current to creep up. So right now I'm sitting here at half a volt and 50 milliamps. And so I'm just going to allow that to go up just a little bit more. We're gonna get up to two or three volts. We're not gonna go all the way up to five. I can see right now that even at one volt, we're drawing 140 milliamps. Still just kind of keep an eye on the board and we're gonna raise it up just a little bit more. And as you can see right now, looking at this thing, there are a few parts in this area that are glowing very hot. Uh, and the first thing I would look at is right down here, we have this capacitor that's right on the board. And that being a tantalum capacitor means that it is a prime candidate to have a dead short. Now this is a keyboard controller. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's probably fine, but the tantalum capacitor is something that could definitely blow up on this motherboard. So we're gonna wanna pull that and see if that clears the short. Because this is an old tantalum, I would just go ahead and cut the thing off and I can replace it later, but there you go. So I got my meter back out here and I'm gonna get in a place where you can see it. And we're gonna go again between the 12 or the five volt rail and one of the ground pins. And you'll see that now we're in the kilo ohms. So we took the short and got it away. The short was that part right there. And uh, now we can safely plug this board in and it looks like it's just gonna boot right up. So I'll be honest, even though I've seen a bunch of reviews of this thing, I was a little bit surprised by just how well it worked. Um, you know, the, the picture is absolutely crystal clear and it just makes it really easy to zero in on which part could be giving me trouble. And then once you have the thing, you find yourself doing all kinds of other stuff with it, like measuring your hand and taking your hand away and seeing that your handprint is still left there on the mat. Um, you wind up walking around your house and doing a little energy survey. And my walls in my office are a, a foot thick um, with just massive amounts of insulation. But my door is the original one that was there. So as you can see, um, you know, I've got some energy leakage around there. Another thing I love about this thing is that you can just do a quick press here and I can take a single picture of my hand on the mat or you can push and hold and you can say that I want to start recording and you can actually record what you're doing. So if you're reaching in some kind of awkward place or if you want to review the footage later, you can record. It's got built-in EMMC storage for, uh, for recording those videos. Then you, know, you just stop it and stuff like that and go back and review it later. So um, I just found this thing to be really, really nice and a quality instrument. It feels good in the hand. And if you find yourself doing this kind of work or really any kind of work, I think you'll come up with some really, really cool uses for it. The other day, I actually used it as a stud finder to find out where the, the joists were running in the ceiling. Absolutely amazing. So um, I've got a link to this in the description and I hope you found the video interesting. So have a great day.